Let's look at how we can take a PDF that's been emailed to you and add it to iBooks. So here's an example of an email that I have that has a PDF attachment. So I'm going to touch the PDF attachment across the bottom and it's going to pop up automatically into the preview. And then I'm going to go into the upper right hand corner, this little box, the share box in the upper right hand corner. And when I choose that, I'm going to scroll over a little bit and I'm going to find on here the copy to books. So when I find that copy to books, I'm going to tap it and it's going to go into my books that I have. I want to forewarn you that I've done this a couple times. That's why it didn't show up on page one on here. But when I touch this in the center of my screen here in the white area, if I tap that, then I'm going to see some different choices up here at the top as far as the toolbar is concerned. So a couple things I can do now that this is in iBooks. One of the things up here is the marker tool. So if I touch that marker tool in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see I have some new tools across the bottom. For example, there may be a time that you want to highlight something that you're reading. And so then you can select a color that you want and then select the tool. So I'm going to select this marker tool here. Now if your iPad is updated, you can also, if you hold down the tool, it's going to bring up this to let you determine how wide you want the marker to be and also the opacity. So do you want it to be really dark or do you want it to be able to see through? So this one you can see is a little more on the um, heavier see-through side of it. So if I grab this marker and I go up to the top and then I can highlight items in the text so that if I want to come back to those or bring them up again I can certainly do that. Also in the lower right hand corner of this tool I have this plus sign in the lower right hand corner and when I tap that I can add uh, shapes or arrows but I can also add text if I want to. So if I tap the text and then I go up onto my screen where it put the text box in here and then I can edit and that's going to bring up my keyboard and I can type right on here. So this can be moved around on the page so that if you wanted to remember to ask a question here or make a point you could certainly do that on that particular page. If I go up to the corner again and I tap that tool that's going to take those markup tools away. I can also, while I'm on a page, I can bookmark a page. So if I wanted to go back to that page later, I could bookmark that particular page. Otherwise, it's simply a matter of swiping across and you're gonna see that I've been in here before and done a little highlighting. Now again, if I touch the document again and I get my tools up here, this one that looks like a bulleted list, if you touch that, that's gonna to go to all of your pages. So that's a quick way, especially if it's a long type of document that you could go to another place and go again, go back to the beginning or something like that. Also, when you are in this tool up here, if you go to the very left, that's going to take you back to your library. One of the things you can do with your library, so that's all of the different iBooks that you have, is you can actually organize them a little bit to sort them. So for example, if I go up to edit in the upper right hand corner, you'll see edit. That allows me to select one of the items that I have. So I can touch that little circle there to select it. And then over at the bottom, you'll see add to, and I can add it to a collection. So what I did already is I went down to this new collection and I made a collection called packets for my board packets and another one called policy for board policy. And I want to add this one to policy. And so then if I wanted to be a little more organized about this whole thing, if I was going into my library, instead of seeing everything, I could tap the collections at the top and then I could go to my policy collections and it would only show those things that I had put into that collection. That would organize it a little bit better for me. Again, I could go upper left hand corner, I could go back to the library to see everything again. Also, if I'm in this edit mode in the upper right hand corner here, if I hold down my finger on a particular item, I could drag it to another location. So if I wanted to organize this in a specific way, 
I could certainly do that so it would be easier for me to find it even within a specific collection. Then I would simply use the done in the upper right hand corner. I can change in this portion, I can change how these are sorted. So for example, if I want the one that I opened last to be on top, that would be my recent. My title would be alphabetical. If I had authors, they would be alphabetized by that. And manually, it's like I was showing, is how you can um, put them in order the way you want to by dragging them around. So again, you can choose how you want these collections sorted. One of the things that I don't feel that this tool does very well is the search capability. So if you notice, there is a search in the lower right hand corner. And when I've played with that search, just to be real honest, if there is a word in the title of what I have, then it will show up. So for example, I was searching for the word student and when I search for the word student, then any book that had student in the title would show up there for me, but not, for example, any book that had student within the text that didn't work. Additionally, additionally, I unfortunately was not able to be able to search within the text. And here, for example, if I chose search on here and I know the word meeting, is in this page. I found it on this page, but it does not search it for me. So that is a disadvantage of this particular iBook.